Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Abduction. Last time we got the power restored to the village of Hunrath and went back to talk to the guy in the vault. Don't remember if he's introduced himself yet or not. But he says we need to shut off this red laser thing. Also, we discovered that when we brought the power back on, these doors can now be opened. So let's go in here and see if we can get closer to that red glowy laser this way. It's right outside there. We can't get out, out onto that track there. And what looks like a door is blocked over there. I think this is near that water wheel we disabled when we moved. Yep, there you see the green water wheel mechanism. That ladder, or that elevator, that we used to get up to the waterfall and re enable the waterfall, which broke the water wheel. So let's see what we can tamper with here. There's that thing on a cart. There's this thing which is buzzing. Doesn't look plugged in. And somebody has broken off part of the structure here to keep people from wandering across there. You could still presumably slide across the rails, but we're not going to do that. And let's just turn this water back on here. It looks like it's feeding the tree, which those red leaves mean that it's either fall or the tree is in distress. So let's give it some water and see if we can improve its condition at all. We can get up to this battery thing here. Open the lid. And there's a sheet of paper that says battery capacitor log. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing terribly important here. Except that apparently somebody plugged it in backwards. Music here plug critter proof. Don't reverse polarity, he they got a new plug. Presumably there was an interest there was an incident happened there. We can connect it or we can leave it unconnected. It doesn't matter yet. Whichever one works. There's something hanging here from an overhead hoist of some sort and one of those message things. All right, now move around just a bit. This is awkward. Why are you so nervous? This is just a pit. Okay, okay, now what? Okay, that's enough. Well, I swear you are a natural. Where did you get these anyway? Are the mostly <laughs> just giving you stuff now? Being generous of late. Not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Are these the same Mofang that they're battling now? You know anything else about that? Lockdown list. Lock tree gate, lock Farley's house, lower upper towers, lift mine car into workroom, turn on Mofang disabler, shut garage door, pump water from tree roots, turn on imager rocks, close swing bridge, divert river, turn off power, activate the dome disabler. I have a feeling we're going to be undoing all of that stuff. Mofang Disabler, Villain Technology, notes from APRAR. Designed to disable anything based on Mofang technology. Disables when blue beam or cloud is within about one and a half feet of any Mofang device element. Elements physically collapse. Reassembly is possible but non-trivial. APRAR assures me that it's not harmful. Still not pointing it at my head. And Ruko has not been told that the Villains provided it. So it seems there's some intrigue going on. 
CW, please change Farley's lock code to secure the vault. Her address backwards should suffice. Regards, Joseph Jansen, Mayor Jansen. Okay, so we go back up to Farley's house, look at her address. We should be able to get into the back door by typing it backwards. Here's another blue beam, just like the one we see there. And that looks like it's on a card, according to the label. And we can tilt this and turn this towards this rock projector here. Which is producing a rather red, glowy rock. And it's broken the rock machine. Mayor's Imager Requests, Entry Canyon, Farley's House, Center of Town, Tree, Water Source. We saw all those messages. He also wants one of the membrane, the cell wall, the wall, and tower, the locomotive power generator, and the scrapyard slash garage. Ambassador Seed Swap Machine Functionality. Radius of swap sphere is defined at first swap, immutable. Seeds recharge naturally from ubiquitous ambient membrane power radiation tied to tree health. Forcing seed open triggers prep behavior, radius demarcation. Small battery to amplify ambient membrane power charges continuously. Parabolic focusing of power used to trigger seed swap behavior. Locking location swap of swap machines assures predictability. Assures predictability, no unanticipated damage. Radius demarcation also occurs at same location and destination sphere. Without a pair seed defining the destination swap location, the destination coordinates match the source. Voila, swapping on demand. Hmm. Mofang solid volume projector. And this is some techno babble. About it. I'm not going to read this whole thing. You can if you want. Just pause the video. But it's also saying 30 hertz timing, which is rather like an NTSC television. The resolution is vaguely NTSC flavored. And it also says that sound is handled separately. So that's why they used a VCR, because the signal is vaguely like an NTSC television. There's some buttons here. And we can drop that thing to the bottom. If it lands right on the rails, we might be able to take it for a drive. And the blue thing apparently is a Mofang technology disabler. And that red thing is described as Mofang technology. So let's see if we can introduce the two of them and see if we can alter our environment. It's one of the things humans are good at is altering our environment. All right, this switch here toggles between driving mode and zapping mode, zap aiming mode, and it uses your standard WASD keys. I want to back you up onto that siding there. Except that up and down are reversed, like in a. Like pulling back on the stick in a flight simulator makes it go up instead of down, as you might expect.
That was noisy. And that... We're still hearing noises from that. So we noticed earlier that these rocks here are kind of glowy, and they're kind of in the middle of the track. So I wonder... Yep, they're fake rocks. These are also clearly red and glowing. And if you played this game at release, they weren't. They were actually made red and glowing in a patch added later. I want to see if I can hit it from... Here, can I? Yep. And then the other one is down by the waterfall. Let's see if we can get to the waterfall. Or if I have to jump through some hoops to get there. I might have to jump through hoops to get there. If that's the case, we will deal with it later. Might be able to arc, arc it off this. No, I think I have to reverse it, get this thing going the other point in the other direction. And I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. I mean, I know there's a way to do that, I just haven't come across it yet. To actually turn this thing around. And that does cause problems later. Actually, now that I think of it, there was one other set of um, broken or glowy rocks. That I want to hit while we're hitting.
Yeah, we went through that door there. We found red glowy rocks up at the... There we go. And I think we can leave the cart parked there for a few minutes. Just pop our head in here and see more dome walls. Although we did something with the dome wall earlier with all that yellow flickering and noises. Let's see what's in that cave first. So yeah, if you play this game at release, this part wasn't here. These were real rocks caving in this tunnel, and you couldn't actually come back here. So this was added in a later revision, a later patch set. And we see... looks like a pub. There's a broken airplane parked in here. The, um... Nitopia? From some county airport that is missing a two-seat single engine. We have a tripod with a work light on it. And this appears to be some sort of a map of Hunrath. We have looks like storage units labeled, as well as these two circles here. And looks like these are these other circles here are where things came. There's there's um a train yard and various other circles carved out of the terrain. Possibly the process called swapping that we heard about, read about in the workroom. Perils of the Sea recipe involving moonshine. which seems to be the purpose of this room here with all these all this apparatus here called the crash site Mofang Bla Motang Blast Shine Hooch Astronaut Drink Fire Plant Juice More Hooch <laughs> Arai Tai Maybe these names have a meaning when we learn more about this thing. Xylophone music. Okay. Nothing really earth shattering in there, nothing important. But um, still gives some flavor to the place. Okay. So he said we want to get through the dome wall. We also have the code to get into, or know how to get into the back door of Farley's house. 
I think we're going to head towards Farley's house. Her address is 1436. I'm not sure if that changes every time you launch the game. Or if it is always the same. But let's take a walk around back and see what we can discover there. There's quite a bit of reading in that episode, or in that inside the house, quite a bit of backstory, so we'll probably cover that in the next episode. I just want to get in there at the end of this one. And then we'll go from there and see what we can learn. That will also give us, if we can open the front door from inside, that will give us a shortcut between that area of the map with all the minecart tracks and back here so we don't have to constantly go through across that river bridge because I have a feeling we're going to be rotating that bridge again and to, to enable us to cross the top of it and I don't want that to block off our only access to the back half of the map. So I have a feeling that we're going to be unlocking shortcuts as we go. Alright, so her address is 1436, which gives us a backwards of 6341. And the door opens. If you've ever played Riven, you know to check behind doors, and sure enough, there's a hidden passageway behind here, but it ends in a large, almost spherical piece of different rock. And we are in the in Farley's house. We can unlock and open the front door and we have our shortcut back to here. And there's some paperwork and some reading material there and a map of the place here. Water source, falls, wall, tower, bosque, which is a, I think, Spanish word for forest. Possibly have other flavors of um, romance languages. Battery shop, CWs, entry canyon, cemetery, Farley's, this wall, plateau, river, lake, bleeder, scrapyard, supplies, fuel, entry canyon, and there's where we started. And there's these green smudges scattered all over the place. And those look like the places where we can actually get to the edge of the dome. What if those are important? Pull the screen down and there's a number 15 written on it sideways. Turn on the projector and something is marked right there. Which I think is labeled as the tower. And there's a second slide in the thing. And we can push the projector over there, and if we line it up just right,
Oh, it doesn't matter. Probably the, the screen used to go up a little bit. It still doesn't make any sense. There's a stuffed bear, some kids' drawings, some important stuff there. And I think we're going to call it quits here for the episode. And in the next one, we'll start reading some of this material. If you don't like hearing me read stuff, then... I'll probably try to remember to put in some chapter markings and we can skip that part. But it does really give the backstory to what's going on here. So thanks for watching. See you next time.